The Samsung Galaxy A01 was released as an entry-level smartphone that has been unveiled quietly at the market in December last year. But I got to know about it just over a month ago. I made an unboxing and first impression video about the Samsung Galaxy A01 over a month ago. If you haven't watched it yet, I will link it up here. Do consider watching it. This smartphone is a no fuss. It's low in price Android phone and also the cheapest member of Samsung's A series lineup. Before I dive in, if you are new to this channel, please do consider subscribing to Logan the Tag Guy YouTube channel. Our new goal here is to reach the 100,000 subscribers mark. It's a huge goal, but with your help, we can reach it. Let's get started. I have been using this phone for a month now and the question that rises up each and every time while I'm using this phone is, who is this phone for? This is a phone that fits a few different groups of people, but are you the one? Who is Samsung actually targeting at? Firstly, let us talk about the price. This phone comes around 100 USD. It is cheap. This might mean something different to different people, but I genuinely believe that this is a phone that fits just about everyone's budget. If you enter the Samsung store and ask the salesperson about the cheapest available phone in their store, the A01 is likely going to be one of the least expensive devices in their lineup, which already makes it sort of enticing. And that's the reason why I think this phone not only is going to sell well, but this will be something people will pick out. If you guys are interested in doing some comparison shopping of your own or maybe want to buy this phone for yourself, I will leave some links down below in the video description to where you can get this phone at its cheapest current prices. So check down there so you don't miss out on any good deals. The phone has a plain design and a low resolution display and this is not much to get excited about but the handset covers the basic well enough. For its low price, it should be a decent device to snap photos, check emails, watch videos and of course make calls. The Samsung Galaxy A01 has a 5.7 inch LCD display, which is minuscule compared to a lot of devices we have seen this year, especially the rest of Samsung's A series lineup. For example, it is the smallest phone Samsung offers this year. The A01 is comfortable when using it one handed. It fits nicely in a pocket or bag, and I think it's a fair balance of screen size without going overboard. It's a nice change from those big, huge smartphones we see nowadays from Samsung. Some on screen icons, like the camera, also look fuzzy on closer inspection, and overall, the LCD screen isn't as vibrant or as rich as the Galaxy's OLED displays. While watching videos is fine, the phone's 720p resolution means I can't watch videos at the sharper 1080p resolution, which many YouTube videos can be viewed in, but you can get around 294 pixels per inch cram in there, and that makes the screen look a bit sharper than it is. I personally feel that this resolution is not that bad, and I also think that this display at high levels of brightness is good. I don't go more than 50% of brightness usually, and at 100% brightness, I feel that this thing is about as bright as anyone could ever want. In addition to that, I also feel that this phone has a colorful and beautiful display for being an inexpensive LCD. I also think the black and dark colors of this display don't generally come off too well, but the rest of the colors look pretty nice. And while the display is framed with the teardrop camera notch, larger bottom chin, and fairly noticeable bezel that's nearly 80% of the screen to body ratio, it still offers a mostly unobstructed view of your content. All in all, there are better displays on the market, but for this price on this phone, I don't have a single thing to complain about the viewing experience. This phone is thin and small enough to navigate with one hand. The A01 has a teardrop notch for its front facing camera that keeps it looking modern. Up top is a headphone jack and on the back side of the phone there are two small slits for the audio speaker grille. The left hand side has the volume control key and the right hand side it has the power button. If you're planning to buy this phone, this is something that you have to take note of. Whenever you put the phone down to watch the video, the audio will be slightly muffled against whatever surface it's lying on. When I laid it on my desk, I didn't hear much of a difference compared to when I was holding the phone in my hand. But when you put this A01 on bed to watch videos, the sound did tempered a tad more. 
Overall, the speaker sounds okay, but don't expect the best to be perfect in a $100 phone. Here are a sample of the speaker test that I did. You be the judge yet again. We all know the plastic is more durable than glass and it's cheaper too. Physically, the A01 embraces its budget phone classification with an inexpensive all plastic build that doesn't try to trick anyone into thinking it's something else. While the other A lineup might offer a shiny polished bag, the A01 keeps things simple. It comes with a plain matte finish on its curvy plastic body, and really, I don't think you can expect much more. The phone has a charging port below and it charges using the micro USB cable and it takes almost 2 hours to charge from 0 to 100%. It's 2020 and I feel it's unacceptable from Samsung to not include a fast charger inside a A lineup device. The phone comes with a 3000 mAh of battery capacity, so a fast charger will make life better for this phone usage. You get a headphone jack at the top of the device so you can utilize it well but the placement is just kind of annoying and it's something that I really never got used to. One of the biggest caveats that I find in this phone is this phone doesn't have a fingerprint sensor which is a little strange for an entry level A lineup phone from Samsung where a fingerprint sensor on the back or at the sides would be a good deal but sadly we only settle for the face unlock which works fine. But. Very so often, I noticed that the A01 took a bit or two to do things too, like opening certain apps like Geekbench 4 especially took a while to launch. It wasn't enough to throw the phone out of the window, but if you want a lightning speed user experience, this phone isn't for you. Benchmark results are also on par with my real observation with the Galaxy A01's Geekbench 4 and 3D Max Slingshot's unlimited scores. The A01 comes with the Adreno 505 GPU either 2GB or 3GB of RAM and either 16 or 32GB of storage with option to throw in an XT card inside. Let's talk about the processor. The A01 is equipped with a Snapdragon 439 processor and runs on the Android 10 operating system with One UI 2.0. The A01 operates quickly enough for most part of the usage. There were times when I noticed it was faster at quitting apps and launching the camera. For day-to-day -day usage, I have to say the A01 did prove me wrong. No, this phone isn't fast and every once in a while, it even does feel a little bit slow and clunky. But let's remember, who is this phone for? Well, it's for the people who likely just need a device to stay connected through phone calls, text messages and maybe social media. It's not for someone who's going to have 50 different apps open or someone who needs to multitask or someone who needs this phone for business with non-stop usage, tapping through the UI or flipping through the apps. Now, let's talk about the app management of the Samsung Galaxy A01. You can see here that there's nothing is really safe or running in the background. And also the 16 gigs of internal storage is just way way too little in this age of large storage. You lose a good chunk of that upfront with Android and the pre-installed apps. And after downloading PUBG Mobile, for example, I was pretty much out of space, so an SD card is a must have. But none of those things are surprising limitation with this phone and in fact, in pushing this phone a bit harder with gaming, the A01 held up fairly well, certainly better than what I expected and there are few games you won't be able to play. I run PUBG with low settings and I regret it instantly. It runs but the amount of lags and app crashes was pretty huge and it's a no go for me. Well, speaking of PUBG, I really feel sorry for my subscribers from India. They recently banned PUBG there, hopefully they undo it. Well, back to the A01, you can still play Temple Run or Beatblade and a large library of other titles that play smoothly on the device and that's great to see and play. I had low expectation when it comes to the cameras of the A01 and through the viewfinder, this phone seems like it would take just awful pictures but actually it proved me wrong. You look back at the results after shooting things and it don't look too bad. The A01 comes with a 13 megapixel f2.2 wide sensor and 2 megapixel f2.4 depth sensing. The Galaxy A01 camera takes clear, 
colorful photos in ample lighting and the red and green hues especially pop in some pictures. The camera has a 8x digital zoom that is decent for getting more details from far away objects but image quality does get muddier and washed out the closer you zoom. The camera can record 1080p video. The video quality is clear, sharp enough, but the phone doesn't have optical image stabilization. So footage won't be super smooth if you're moving around a lot. The selfie camera comes with a measly 5 megapixel shooter. It takes the basic portrait shots, 1080p video, panorama, and a few pro controls. The dimmer the lighting, the worse the pictures are when it comes to low lighting photography in this Galaxy A01. There's no night mode here and if you have taken a photo during the night, it does brighten up the image but it's unusable. And here are the sample photos from the Samsung Galaxy A01. You be the judge and let me know in the comment section below what do you think about the cameras of the Samsung Galaxy A01. So before I come to my conclusion on this Samsung Galaxy A01, let us see some pros and the cons for this device. The pros are the A01 has a good battery life for basic usage. It has a good 720p screen. It produces decent image quality. It gives good performance for its price range and it has a headphone jack that some of the Samsung flagship devices lack. The cons are the load time is huge for some apps. The micro USB charger is really really a no go for me. There's no fast time so it takes time to charge a 3000 milliamp hour battery and it comes with a 16 gigabyte of storage which is too small in this age of time. The conclusion for the Samsung Galaxy A01, if you want a phone for general use like making a phone call, texting, for email, light gaming or for light social media usage, then this phone is for you. Well, this isn't a phone for everyone. For the right person who understands what they are getting, this can be a phone that's better than expected. This phone will work best for your kid who are expecting their first phone or maybe for your grandparents who haven't used a smartphone before. It also works best for you as a backup phone too. Before I end this video, I would like to say that this video is made based on my hands-on usage on the Samsung Galaxy A01. The views, pros and the cons were made based on my usage on the Samsung Galaxy A01. There's no compensation and no copy approval provided by the manufacturers to me. And there's certainly no early preview of this video was given to Samsung. Logan the tech guy works for the viewers, not the brand manufacturers. So yeah, the Samsung Galaxy A01 400 bucks is worth the price if you understand the usage. But what do you guys think? Is the A01 worth the money or would you recommend me a different budget phone altogether? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts of course. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video and if you find this video helpful and if you want to see more from me then don't forget to hit that little subscribe button below. It is always really appreciated and check out my A71 review videos and I will catch you in the next video. All love and peace out.